What uh, what the band means to me is that it is up to me to get the job done and to do my best. <laughs> We're super excited about here at NANCAP and a resident college's fine arts program. We have Beverly Blacksheep here with us. Hello everyone out there. <laughs> My name is Beverly Blacksheep and I will introduce myself in Navajo first. She'e Beverly Blacksheep in the chin. My dash gives you dash chedo, the best legend a dash nale, nele, a baluk ade nasha. My name is Beverly Blacksheep, and uh, I, I, um, I am from uh, Salina Springs, Arizona, a place called Balakai Mesa, and I grew up there. Um, my clans are uh, Bitter Water, and my paternal clan is. Um, uh, Tango clan and my grandfather's clan are um, um, Coyote Pass people and my uh, paternal grandfathers were black sheep and that's where I get my name. <laughs> um, my uh, my Nolly was a, a well-known medicine man I used to call him Mr. Black Sheep so my dad's the only one that that uh, carried his name so that's where I get get that black sheep name. Um, I have been painting for more than, I'd say about 35 years now. And um, most of my paintings depict a lot of and um, some of the scenery and um, um, things from my experience since growing up on the reservation. Um, I um, went to school at NAU. Um, I've been mostly self-taught most of my life, um, <laughs> um, but I, I, I feel like I'm still learning. <laughs> um, now that's, that's pretty much what I've been doing for the past 35 years, and today we're on lockdown, so, um, well, actually we're not, it was this weekend, but um, I feel like I've I'm, I'm been on a constant lockdown for the past month. <laughs> so if you have any questions for me, um, please free, feel free to tell me right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we definitely welcome uh, welcome you and thank you for for joining us, Beverly. We're we're excited to have you on board. How did you find this medium of of artwork that you that you are constantly creating and um, and and working with? I didn't get into art until later on during my college years, and um, I started painting maybe in the early. Uh, 1980s I think when my my son was about four years old um, I was studying interior design and we did a lot of interior design projects and um, I think I you know we had like a color and design classes where we had to buy all these paint brushes and learn about color and form and all these other things so that kind of piqued my interest in painting and then uh, I had a boring desk job I was doing work study at the NAU and um, I was doodling <laughs> and my, my boss didn't care. She, she actually was one of the first people who, who bought one of my pieces and she continued to collect them throughout my college years. And she has a good collection of early black sheep paintings from the early eighties. <laughs> and um, her name was Betty Byers, <laughs> by the way. And she showed some of my work to other people. And then that's when I started to get a following. So I think my first painting I saw was like $35 and um, I thought, oh, wow, you know, you know, being a college student and, you know, barely getting by, I thought, oh, man, maybe I can um, uh, sell some of my work. So I started walking around downtown and talking to different uh, gift shops because there were a lot of Native um, art venues downtown in Flagstaff at the time. And I ran into a couple of people who very who were very encouraging and you know, they saw something in my work, even though it wasn't that great <laughs> at the time. I remember I, I walked into um, Abraham Begay's um, 
shop. I, he was, he's a well-known silversmith. And I remember, I still remember to this day how he encouraged me to, to keep going. Because, you know, you have something special. Continue. So, all these years. And um, I uh, continued with my education and uh, ended up working for a while um, for um, Goodwill Industries. Um, and then I had a back injury that sent me back home to the rest. Um, this is about uh, maybe late late 80s around there. And um, I, uh, I started picking up the brush again and started painting uh, to support myself because at the time I couldn't really do much with my back that way. So um, I ran into a couple people downtown in, in Gallup and um, one uh, uh, camera shop, they had a little gallery next door. Um, it was run by Nello. I don't, I don't remember his last name, but he was a kind um, Italian guy who <laughs> really liked my work, and he he uh, me down to try to um, different things. But um, at that time, I was doing a lot of the old. Um, Person Begay, Baton Yas. Um, one of my favorites was Daryl Naylor, and I really, I really liked the work. I was fortunate enough to, you know, during the later years to um, meet Harrison Begay, and I met uh, Andy Sinagini, and I met uh, uh, Narcisco Beta. He was quite a character. I, he was one of my favorite artists. <laughs> and um, during those times, I, I kept developing, but at that that was my, my uh, I guess my self-teaching years, I guess, because I had no clue what I was doing. I was just expressing myself on, 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 on paper at that time. I wasn't doing canvas work at the time until later on. Um, I think uh, I didn't start doing uh, canvas until maybe uh, early 90s, maybe, after I um, started doing the shows and and meeting other artists who encouraged me to try different things. And one of the things that I, I uh, wanted to try was ca uh, working on canvas. So uh, that kind of pushed me in different direction. And um, I, um, so far, I've been, you know, doing a lot of canvas work lately. But I kind of switch back and forth. Sometimes I feel like I, I need to ground myself. So I go back to the traditional stuff flat uh, traditional pieces now and then but um, lately I've been working with a lot of um, texture and color um, I've met some artists through um, this organization called art of the people and a lot of those artists we, we do a lot of group projects and when we do those projects we kind of um, share with one another different techniques and and different ideas about art and um, one of the things uh, I, I say that they you know I I was influenced by was uh, the color. Uh, I was always afraid of color, and my earlier pieces were so pastel and uh, kind of timid as far as color went. But as I got more bolder, I started doing more and more brightly colored paintings and uh, playing with different color schemes and everything. So um, that that was something that uh, kind of um, helped me develop my style. Um, people tell me that I have a unique style and they recognize it right away, which is a blessing to me because I, I don't want to do anything that's too similar to anyone else, but I try to do, just do me. And, um, I, um, when I work, I, I think about a lot of things in my childhood and, um, people who influenced me, uh, especially the, um, the women in my in my life, my mother, my grandmother, especially my Nolly, my aunts on both sides of my family, you know, they were all strong, independent women who, who were very resilient and creative. And that's the kind of woman I wanted to be. So in that light, I, I did what I could to um, 
portrayed a Navajo woman as uh, strong and and beautiful. Right now, I'm doing a trying to work into doing a series for about the COVID nineteen, and one of the first pieces that I um, I did is the one that's on the flyer. It's called uh, Looking Back, Moving Forward to Our Past, and we see how strong our people were. And we're still here, and we're still strong. And um, I think about my grandmother. She raised six kids by herself, and she never, she never stopped. She worked all the way through her life, and she never stopped believing and hoping. And she was always smiling and working. <laughs> so she was always um, um, important in that sense. If you could talk about one of your latest trends, um, we briefly talked about it on the phone about how you're changing the position of the face um, in your in your paintings as well. Most of my paintings, if you look at them, they they, they have a sideways profile. Um, I guess it's just that Davo me that says you're not supposed to stare at people. It's not it's bad manners, but <laughs> I I have a, a I guess I have a thing where I rather have a painting not staring at you. But this particular piece, I wanted to show the eyes, the face and the eyes and um, express um, the hope and, and struggle that's going on right now. And um, she's looking back, but she's moving forward to a new horizon. We hope good things for our children. And... Uh, and uh, those represent my grandmother. She always had those kinds of uh, dishes, you know, the enamel wear. And so I always put pieces of those in my paintings, you know, now and then. Um, she also had uh, peach trees in the back of her house. So that reminds me of her. So I guess that's why I put a lot of fruits and flowers in my paintings. Um, of course, I have two sons and a daughter and I just people always ask me why do you paint a lot of women you don't paint any male figures so I put the little boy in there to represent the bond between a mother and son so that's what that painting is about. I really enjoyed this particular piece um, the the protector piece that you have um, if you could talk a little bit about about this warrior woman that you have placed in the center of of, of this particular uh, painting. Um, this painting is titled um, Protector of Home and Family. And if you look closely, she has, um, you can't tell by look, unless you look at it closely, but she has a baby on her back. And the baby is, um, you know, you can't see it, but you see a piece of the cradle board sticking out behind her shoulder. And she's holding the arrows. Uh, arrows are a sign of protection and, um, we women, we, we we always protect our families and our homes, and we're very, uh, um, like I say, we're, we're a maternal society, and most of the women that I know, they've always um, been there for their families, and they, they take care of the, the animals, they take care of the home, and uh, the, the background is special to me in that it, it represents where I come from. Um, you can see the fish point on one on the one side on the right side, and then follow Kai Mesa on the other. You can see the hogan represents home, and the, there's a little section of cornfields on the way the background. There's a black horse in the background, and that represents uh, my mother's horse. She had a black horse that she had for many years that she really, really cared about. And he, uh, he stayed, in the, he was part of the family. <laughs> um, her dress represents the old, the old style uh, veil dress that the women wore before we started wearing the, the other velveteen skirts and the calico, I mean, calico skirts and the velveteen shirts. Um, and then of course the birds, they represent, a lot of different things and, and here they represent freedom and um, flight um, the sky and the, the clouds represented in the background storms coming 
um, we can weather any storm, whatever comes along. So that piece represents uh, protecting the home. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit, not only do you work on canvas and on paper, but you're a published, right? Your work has been published and wondering if you could talk a little bit about making of that, um, that, that, that series that you had out with Salina uh, Bookshelf? Um, the first in the series was uh, Baby's First Laugh. I was uh, approached by um, uh, Salina Bookshelf to illustrate and um, help um, edit those books. Um, at the time I was, go I was going to NAU, and this is a long time ago, I think, um, back in the early 2000s, I think. And um, it's funny because um, when I did that series, I didn't realize that. Um, they would they would last this long and they would be cherished by so many children. Um, I, I was so excited to do it because I was like, oh wow, um, I can imagine all these little hands holding these these paper, I mean these cardboard bo um, books. And um, I wasn't. Uh, um, I, I was. It was. It was. It was, just, it was just fun to do. Um, and then I thought about how. Um, how much uh, it would influence a lot of these young children at that age to learn how to count and learn how to um, to um, express themselves in Navajo and and it was uh, something special to me because when I I grew up um, in California and um, I didn't move back to the reservation until I was like 10 years old so I I lost that that time between that time um, being absorbed into my um, Navajo culture. So I thought, well, um, I, I could be a help to those children that live in the urban areas and help them to be exposed to uh, the language at that age and start learning how to count and learning about colors and all these different things. Um, but that was a fun period of my life. And I still get, you know, uh, kids that were like, um, they are in high school now who bring their books over to have me sign. So it's so neat. <laughs> I am not going to lie. I like it. You know, my sons may be some of those people um, because it just, <laughs> you see how not just the painting, but the painting in, in this storytelling format, which is very much what your, your work does. Your work tells a story um, and, and even more so in these, in these series, how they're able to connect these inner generations um, through the artwork. And so um, for that, I'm, I'm appreciative. Mm -hmm. How do you see your artwork um, as impacting the community? I hope that it makes, uh, gives people a sense of pride in their, in their uh, culture. And um, I hope that, uh, I, I know that a lot of the, the Navajo women, they see my work and they go, ooh, ah, and it's like they understand it. They understand it right away. And I don't have to really explain it because they've been there and they know um, how it is to be a mother, how it is to to uh, see their grandmothers and how they used to dress and um, the things they used to do, the weavers, the potters, the the daily activities like herding sheep, um, um, all this, the scenery and all these things that um, we see when we're, we were it, my generation anyway, we, we saw a lot of that um, growing up. Um, I, I try to think, well, if I can preserve all that, those memories and those thoughts into my artwork, then maybe the future generations will be interested in, and want to carry on those some of those traditions and, and, and be proud of who they are. That. Do you ever find any kind of contention between um, those contemporary like fine arts and what people have been trying to uh, box in as, as cultural arts or do you see them as all one expressive art form for Navajo people to explore? I think that it, it's all open. I don't think there's any restrictions if we look at it like, um, we all have our own experiences that we um, portray or um, I guess you could say the context of the times that we live in, we express those things at the moment. Uh, if you look at, um, you know, some art from, you know, the 18th century, you see stuff that happened in those times. Whereas what, you know, things are happening now, we are into the, 
you know, the computer age and all this um, technology that's just coming at us it's so fast, you know. I, uh, my my four-year-old granddaughter has a tablet and she was already using it when she was a year old. And it, it just, it's just astonishing how, how fast these kids learn. But I just hope that they don't um, forget where they come from and, and, and that they, you know, they absorb good things along the way. It's a hurdle for you gaining the type of success that's needed in order to make your artwork, you know, your, your main livelihood. Well, it's been a process for me. I've had to pay, pay my dues along the way, and I've been doing this for a long time. Um, I guess it's more like uh, you have to network. You have to do a lot of footwork. you got to go uh, make yourself available at the art shows, show your work, and, and, and be available to talk about it and explain it. And um, I've done a lot of um, shows, in, uh, mainly in the Southwest, but I've done a few on, you know, in the east, eastern part of the United States. And uh, I've um, you know, seen a lot of things. Um, I've traveled a little bit, and I, I try to absorb um, all kinds of um, uh, art and uh, other, other people's work. I, I admire a lot of artists, and I, um, you know, I've, I've been influenced by a lot of artists. And, um, but um, I think that uh, I, I guess you can, all you can do is just uh, um, do your best. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you know, trying trying as hard as you can at what, what your what your goal is. You um, mentioned that you have um, a lot of people. Even you done a couple of name dropping in terms of of artists who have influenced you. I guess could you talk about one of the biggest um, artists who has impacted your work or, or your life? Oh my goodness, and so many of them. I I can't pick one out. <laughs> but um, uh, let me more recently. I think I've been influenced a lot by um, uh, artists like um, uh, Elizabeth Whitethorn, who is an amazing artist. Uh, she depicts a lot of women like I do, but her style is so unique. And, and, and I, I just love her work. I have several of her paintings here in my house and I've always been a big fan of hers. And then her brother, Bahi Whitethorn, um, He's been a big influence also. He's always been very positive and has given me a lot of good advice along the way. Um, I met artists like um, Teddy Draper, who also um, kind of um, noticed my work, and, and he also gave me some pointers on what to do and how to market my work. Um, but um, I I still feel like I'm still learning, and I've been it's been a long process, but I, I keep trying to do, do my best and, and express myself in, in, in all ways I can, I can think of. And, um, I hope that, um, I always think that I hope that people who, who purchase my art will, you know, feel good about it. And, and, you know, right now I'm doing, um, I, I started a, a small promo company called Black Sheep Originals, and you can see that on my Instagram. But I make these um, prints on coffee mugs and tiles and different things, and I I wanted to um, share my work in a you know in a way that's usable and that people could enjoy. And when they pick up their coffee mug in the morning, and they can smile and say, "This is going to be a good day." I like that. I do like that. I ha I'm not, I must confess. I, like I said, we're a huge fans. So I have a couple, couple of mugs <laughs> um, from, from this. We do have some questions that are coming in um, from uh, those people who are, who have joined us through zoom or who are joining us on Facebook live. So I'm going to go ahead and, and pull some of those questions. And if you guys do have any questions, be sure to write them down and crystal crystals whispering into my ear, letting me know who's, who's asking questions and stuff. So please don't feel um, embarrassed or shy, um, definitely reach out if you have a question. Um, one of the questions that we have, uh, Beverly, is um, you brought up um, Art of the People. If you could tell us a little bit more about Art of the People and how you got involved with that organization. Art of the People is a nonprofit organization, and you can um, 
uh, get on their website. It's uh, artofthepeople.org, and it's headed by uh, Bahi Whitethorn. And uh, we um, we have I don't know how many members on there. There's so many people on the, on there. I don't I can't count them all, but um, a lot of us we um, we network with each other and we try to boost each other and 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 build each other up. Um, we're we try to help each other market. We try to do a lot of group projects. I think the the latest, the two that comes to mind are the ones that we did for the Navajo Department of Transportation building. Um, that's all done by Art of the People. There were so many artists. I think there were like 20 artists that did that project. We did our, we added our own, um, your own uh, flair into each piece that was uh, drawn on the walls and we did we, we donated paintings to add to that um, to that building um, the other one was the uh, project we did for twin arrows which um, was a 10 day 10 paintings uh, project and it was it was really fun to do we had a lot of uh, good um, well-known artists not only painters but sculptors and jewelers who helped with that that project and uh, it was uh, very uh, everything came out really nice I think um, it was it was nice to be able to work with uh, other well-known artists and and kind of um, get to know them and 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 see how they work um, but uh, we we have also done a lot of um, projects with children we visit the schools and we do projects with them um, uh, we try to teach um, art and, and, and just encourage uh, young people to be creative in, in every area of their life, you know, all their aspects, you know, whether they're not, they don't have to, you know, choose to be artists, they could choose to be anything. And art kind of helps, um, I think it helps them to think more um, and, and be creative and, and know that they can push themselves to be anything. It sounds like a really great organization. Um, it's so refreshing to hear um, when you when artists come together to help each other. For you know, I I deal a lot with um, different types of medias, and a lot of times what we're always dealing with is how people are like hiding from each other, or you know, there's that competition, of course, um, that always exists. So to find an organization that um, brings together you know, artisans for the betterment of, of future generations. It's, it's really refreshing to hear. And so I'm, I'm glad that you were able to, to expand a little bit about the, um, on those things. Um, thinking about, uh, for example, the art shows, what's your favorite? So some of the art markets that I've seen you at, like over at the Herd or Swaya or the, the Ceremonial, which you did take the uh, coveted uh, poster piece um, a couple years back. What's the What's your favorite part about participating in in these art shows? Uh, meeting different people and and showing my work. Um, a lot of people they, but I I think I like I like traveling. I like um, the the excitement of of setting up and and showing everyone what I've been doing lately and my latest pieces and uh, talking about them and and learning from other people too and getting their opinions on what I, what I'm doing. What advice do you have? for artists, um, for future Navajo artists, or people who are aspiring to, to succeed in, in the art world? Keep moving forward and uh, uh, don't let people um, tell you you're not doing things right. But you know, you, you have an open um, audience and open, open, everything is open to you and um, try different things uh, till you find that style that you're comfortable with. Um, but always put a little bit of yourself into each piece that you do. To close off, um, when you hear the phrase, oh, with it, babe, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Oh, gosh, the first thing that comes to my mind is um, work hard and um, always do the best you can to achieve your goals and uh, finish your projects or whatever you're trying to do. Um, work hard at it and, and be the best you can be. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Beverly. Uh, we will see everybody in
Ne canı gavva vav be hadinçte.